Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jason Fisher, your host today, and we're in the Southern Piedmont doing Tree ID Part 3. The reason there's a Part 3 is it's wintertime. You can tell behind me there are no leaves on the trees. And if you've only learned leaves to, to key out your trees, you're out of luck because you either have to wait till springtime or you look on the ground and hope the leaf you're looking at came from the tree above, which is not very reliable. So stick with us, we're going to take a walk, dig a little deeper, and look at what you can see in the winter and still do tree identification and, and take that extra step and learn some more. Thanks for joining us. Stick with us. All right, it might help to stop and pause just for a moment and take a look at a few terms that might help you with winter tree ID. For example, in this picture, you see the parts of a twig. These include the buds, the leaf scars, the stipule scars, lenticels, and the pith, which is the center part of the twig. You also notice from the next picture here, the bud terminology. And those are some of the same things I just mentioned, but a photo to help you when terms are brought up in an identification uh, booklet. When looking at oak twigs, the buds on the end come in clusters. Red oak tend to have uh, larger scales and may appear more pointed, but the key thing is clusters at the end of the stem at the terminal bud for oaks. In this example, we use ash to look at the leaf scars. They're the, the white areas on each of these twigs. The white ash on the left has a more U-shaped leaf scar, whereas the green ash on the right is more D-shaped. Within the leaf scar are bundle scars, and you can dig deeper and learn that as well, but I wanted to point those out in this example. Here's a picture I borrowed from Virginia Tech's dendrology page with various stems showing from left to right. You can see at the top a maple lateral bud, which again are pointed as I mentioned oaks are. But if you notice the um, twigs, the leaf scars and twigs are oppositely arranged. So pay attention to opposite versus alternate as well as the bud arrangement. And then looking down uh, midway on the right, you see elm twigs have a staggering uh, angled kind of effect, a uh, zigzag effect to the limbs, which is unique uh, to elms. Uh, also at the bottom, you'll see the black walnut twig. And the stem scars and leaf scars have a monkey face resemblance and the chambered pith, which is distinct to black walnut. All right, we'll try to do some close-ups. I'm not sure how clear the focus will be, but we'll, we'll try. Um, again, we're looking at stems, leaf buds, leaf scars, and obviously stem arrangement. You can see that this has an alternating pattern. We have a stem here, we have a stem here. But the giveaway in the wintertime is looking at the terminal bud. And in this case, if that'll clear up for you, this is a tulip tree, a yellow poplar, Magnoliaceae, and if you think of a magnolia bloom before it turns white, it's really swollen and, and green. This is like a miniature version of that. All right, we're taking our walk. And so this is our first tree we'll look at in the winter. So something I noticed on this that's worth looking at and checking out. Well, you notice the deep groove bark. Kind of looks like alligator skin. Whatever it takes. And if you look up the tree, it has a pretty gnarly form. See, it curls at the top there and doesn't grow very tall. This is our sour, sourwood tree, Oxydendrum arboreum. And what I want you to notice about this tree is rarely do they grow straight up. So if you see a tree when you're looking through the woods in the forest, you see most of these trees grow pretty straight up. Here's one just below me sour wood. Kind of lays over at an angle, lays low. There's another one down in the bottom. Probably don't see the one I'm actually looking at, 
Well, what I do want to show you is what we call the witch's brooms, which are the, the flowers from the spring. Of course, they're dead now, but the top of the tree will have the flowers, and you can see them now that it's wintertime. So with the leaves off, if you look up in the top of this tree here, and I'm going to try to zoom, see those little tufts? like little brooms in the top of the tree that's what you're looking for so if you see that you have a sourwood and so sourwood happens to be the only tree in the genus oxydendrum so just pointing out some interesting things about them this one has seen its better day Here's a characteristic for winter ID. Oaks typically hold their leaves throughout much of the winter. So if you're walking and you see leaves on a tree in the wintertime, it's very possible it's in the uh, Fagaceae family. In this case, this is a white oak. You also see American beech. We'll show you that next. Particularly the young trees in the understory will have a golden leaf that holds all winter until the new bud pushes it off. And here's a shot of a young American beech tree with those golden leaves I was telling you about. It tends to hold them. They are shade tolerant, so you'll find them in the understory uh, at a young age. And here's a shot looking across this branch horizontally. And the problem with videos, y'all may not can see that. Hopefully it'll focus on you. The bud here, really sharp and pointed, light brown. This is our beech, American beech. And another oak this is our southern red oak, like we saw earlier this spring, holding on to its leaves for much of the winter. And another red oak, our willow oak, holding on to a few leaves. Uh, it's the tree that's mistakenly often called pin oak. I don't know why, uh, but the giveaway is the leaf has a shape very similar to your your finger, uh, the shape of a finger. There's a decent shot there. So it's a long, slender, straight leaf. Okay, we're not going to even walk down and get close to these. So from a distance, you saw this earlier. What we got? Looking across the landscape, trees not holding any leaves, and all of a sudden you look down in the understory, and bam, there's some small guys holding on to some golden colored leaves, real pronounced veins in the leaves. American beech. And so in wintertime, we're looking at other things such as bark. Our leaves are gone, and so if that's all you've learned is tree ID by leaf, uh, you're out of luck in the winter, at least for deciduous trees. So uh, giveaway for this tree, this is our wild cherry, black cherry. You can see the, the little cells, the little cross, almost looks like cat claws, kind of scratches going horizontally uh, across the bark. It's a dead giveaway. And we've got some mild black knot coming on the bark, which is very common for South Side Virginia in the Piedmont. Not extensive on this tree. And come April, just when it leaves out, it'll have a tent caterpillar nest right there in the fork. So late, late winter, early spring, this is a giveaway as well. Here's another tree we ran across. Might as well show it to you. Uh, Royal Paulonia Princess Tree. It's questionable whether that's on the invasive species list. It is listed. Some argument about that, but anyhow, originated in Asia. You can see the linocells on the bark. Almost looks like barnacles. And the other thing is, when I was a kid, we would break these up and make whistles out of them. If I can get that in the light, you can see has a hollow pith. Okay, so you mean you could put a straw right down in that. So we used to make whistles out of those. Had no clue at the time that's what they were. It was just something fun to do. I don't know of another tree that has that. So there's nothing in the pith of that tree. It's just hollow. 
and the princess tree again you can actually see the blooms that are set for this coming year in fact i see a little purple flower peeking out there we had a warm spell but it's gone back in for the winter uh my girls call this the giant grape tree if you look at last year's uh fruit it looks like a bunch of grapes out on the end of the branch purple flowers real showy but again it's winter you can see next year's flowers and buds that are set and this is a really big tree at the diamond are probably pushing 16 18 inches once used for plantation growth some people still try to grow those um, and they the ones that do the plantations are mostly mostly moved to Asia because they have 11 months out of the year they can grow them we only have eight to nine Boy, videoing in the winter is a different story. The sun's low in the sky and you get lots of shadows. I'll try to show you this. So you still want to look at stem arrangement in the winter. You can see this one that I'm waving for you there. We see opposite branching, so we know it's a maple, a ash, or a dogwood. In this case, we've got some swollen red buds there. If you can see that. I'll take a picture of it so it'll be a little clearer. And your evergreens are easy to spot in the wintertime with leaf off. So you can take a walk and you can find plants like this eastern red cedar here. We've got uh, American holly sapling uh, that's come up from the parent. You can see this cone on this Virginia pine that's opened up. The seeds have fallen out this winter to get ready for new seedlings to emerge next spring. Also, if you're out walking doing winter tree ID, you may come across some greenery in the woods. In this case, it's an invasive Chinese privet. You can see it's gotten established here and near this uh, waterway. Oftentimes will take over the understory. And if there's a timber harvest here and this isn't controlled, it will take over and suppress any regeneration so it's also a good time to find unwanted species during winter tree id and here we come across some japanese honeysuckle it's got some green briar intertwined with it again some more greenery in the winter time you can be looking for to check out things you may not want or may want you can see this edge of this cemetery here going into the forest is pretty riddled with uh, some invasive plants uh, that are green in the winter. So when leaf off during tree ID, you can also find, uh, and most are evergreen or, or deciduous evergreen. You can see Chinese privet here to the right. In the background there, you can see English ivy that's covering uh, those trees there and choking them out. It'll girdle them over time And then of course you've got some Japanese honeysuckle and then you have our native eastern red cedar But just pointing out uh, What you can find During winter tree ID. It's helpful to have a different lens on when you're looking for what you have on your property Thank you for joining us for 15 Minutes in the Forest, Winter Tree ID. Next week's topic will be Forest Soils Part 2. Have a great day.